able to do the twist because that was the only dance move that I could do. Um, I was a dancer. Uh, you know, I had trained as a dancer for years. It was something that I did in my extracurricular time. And it was something that I had kind of stopped doing when I, you know, finished college and entered the professional world. And, but it was still something that I really loved. But, you know, when I was sick, I didn't have the energy or the strength to dance. And I certainly could not go out to a dance club and dance with other people. I was pretty much confined to a hospital for, you know, six days of inpatient treatment and then recovery. And so, I was pretty isolated and immunosuppressed. And by putting out this call to action on YouTube and on Facebook, within a couple of days, we had thousands of people that were twisting out cancer. And it was at that point that I realized that there was more to this community than my blog. And there was really a group of cheerleaders that were out there that were cheering me on that I didn't know existed. And so when I finished treatment, I really wanted to be able to pay it forward and to provide other people with the community that I built and craved and needed and felt that there was really a space for. So that's that's what I did. Wow. And so you have a signature program, which is Brushes with Cancer. So tell us about that. Tell us about yeah. that, that particular program. Yeah. So, you know, I formed Twist Out Cancer in 2011. So in June of 2011, right after I had finished treatment, and it really was an online platform for people to connect, to share their experiences and to share their twist on cancer. So that's lessons learned, fighting strategies, new perspectives. But as I got better and as I was able to go out in the world and connect with people in real life, what became clear was that while the online piece was so important, so was the in-person piece. And it was like a world that I hadn't been a part of for over a year. Um, and so we had initially designed the website to be this sort of call and response where people can upload their challenges or calls to action. And we had one girl who I had met through my oncologist named Anna Swarthout. And she also had gray zone lymphoma, and which was kind of rare that I was meeting another gray zoner in my, in my area. Um, and she had put out a call to action asking for people to create unique works of art, not using the shade of gray, because gray was all that she was seeing. She had studied art history, she was an artist, and she felt unable to create because she was managing so much. And within a couple of days, we had people all over the world that were creating art in her honor. And it got me thinking about just the important medium of the creative arts, of how could we use the creative arts as a mechanism for healing and in, in a similar way, dance and writing was so instrumental to my own healing. And for Anna, it was this desire to be able to create again that she so craved. And so when I saw the response online, I then turned to our board members and I said, I think there's something more here. And I think we need to shift our mission and our work. And it should no longer be just about our online presence and call to action, but it really should be about using the creative arts for healing. And so Brushes with Cancer was inspired by Anna. And Brushes with Cancer is a four-month program where we match people touched by cancer that we call inspiration. So that could be survivors. Anyone that's heard those three words, you have cancer, you've survived that experience. It could be previvors, so people that are genetically predisposed to cancer. And it could also be caregivers, our unspoken heroes that often don't have a place at the table. So we match them with artists that we believe in, that we think are ready to participate in this program. And they go through a high screening process, application process, and we match up the artists and inspirations um, as a team, so together. And they are mentored by clinical social workers and psychologists and art therapists. And once they go through this sort of four month period of the inspiration opening up about their experiences with cancer, the artist is then charged with creating a unique work of art reflective of that person's journey. And we have these big art exhibitions and galas that celebrate life and storytelling and the hard and the resilience and the beautiful and the ugly. And it really is just all about being honest and open and vulnerable. And we've been doing this now since 2012. Um, and so we had our seventh annual program in Chicago, but over the last seven years, we've impacted over 30,000 people through this program in Chicago, Philadelphia, Tel Aviv, Montreal, Toronto, Detroit, and Austin. So it's wow. been a 
Well, and how wonderful that you took something that was kind of gloom and doom, you know, when you get that cancer diagnosis and you turned it into something that's just absolutely beautiful and it's art and everybody, well, most people I think can really appreciate art. And the story that goes behind that is incredible. That's just incredible. Thank you. So what's your favorite story? Is there a favorite story of a, of a survivor through brushes with cancer that kind of resonates with you that, that you and that really touches your heart? Oh, we have so many, honestly. Um, but I will say, so I'll, I'll, I'll share two. Um, so my sister Neely is actually a clinical social worker and she was a caregiver for me. And, you know, she, she has obviously watched twist evolve and grow. And I had her participate three years ago and she was matched with a gr- a girl named Megan Milano. So Neely is a, was you know, serving as an artist, but also as a caregiver. And she is what we call an ur- urban explorer. So she photographs abandoned buildings. And she always was just photographing these buildings and trying to tell the stories that were left behind. And it was the first time that she brought someone actually into the space. And she brought Megan in, and Megan had recently lost her mother, who was a breast cancer uh, survivor. She had recently passed, and her father was diagnosed with ALS shortly after that. So this was a young woman who had been through a lot. And Neely ended up bringing Megan into an abandoned theater and had her wear her dress that Neely had worn to my wedding. And she photographed her in this space. And it was this beautiful healing process that happened for both of them where Neely had never been able to really publicly deal with my own illness and was grappling with the impact that it had had on her. She was able to use her artistic talents to be able to then empower Megan to feel like she had a voice and could stand up on stage and publicly own her story. And it was just beautiful to see their collaboration and to see their friendship and to see how their connection really helped each of each other heal in the process. So I would say that's one of my favorites. It's also very personal. Um, And then the other is that we had August Spree, who is um, a soft tissue cancer survivor. She was matched with Brad Young. And Brad was a woodworker out of Michigan. And August was based in Chicago and had three kids and actually was diagnosed when she was pregnant. And they connected so well that they fell in love and August actually moved to Michigan and is raising her boys with Brad. And this is years later. Um, So that is not the intention, obviously, of the program is to create a love connection. But it's something that we feel really good about because they both have been incredibly involved with the organization. They love one another. And I think it just shows you what can happen when you allow yourself to be vulnerable and to be heard and to put your story into someone else's hands. That's awesome. That's awesome. So how can our listeners learn more about Twist Out Cancer and how can they become involved in your organization? Well, you can go to twistoutcancer.org and learn all about our programs. Everything is up there and is updated regularly. We also have a pretty strong social media following and try to put updates um, out on Facebook and LinkedIn and Instagram. So follow us and Twitter, of course, um, follow us online. We are going to be launching Brushes with Cancer applications in Chicago and in Austin for 2020. Um, So please, you know, if you live in those areas, but also even if you live out of state, we definitely still are able to match participants from all different types of locations. That's the beauty of, you know, technology where we feel like technology can bring people together no matter where they're at in their life and where they live. Um, So we will be launching those applications in the next month or so. So definitely stay tuned for that and join our newsletter. Awesome. Well, we are almost out of time, so I want to say thank you so much, Jenna, for being my guest today. I appreciate you taking the time and sharing your story with us. 
Oh, thank you, Kim. It's been an honor. And I think the work that you're doing is tremendous. Oh, truly. thank you. Thank you so much. If you have any questions or comments or would like to know more about the guests on our show, feel free to contact me at kbecker at hellogorgeous.org. If you want to know more about Hello Gorgeous, go to the website, www.hellogorgeous.org. And we invite you to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and download our mobile app. Thank you for joining me today on Hello Gorgeous, everything beauty, cancer, and inspiration. I'm your host, Kim Becker. And until next time, stay gorgeous.